Welcome back. The National Assembly has taxed the revenue generating agencies of government in Nigeria to produce 3 trillion naira annually. Now, this was revealed by the Senate President Ahmed Lawan. He emphasized the need to improve the internally generated revenue of the federal government. He said the Senate will be stiff on generating more and more revenue in order to reduce borrowing. Now, the Senate President urged agencies who can't meet up with the target to reach the Senate in order to get solutions that will enable them to meet the target. Also, Senator Solomon Adeola, the chairman of the Committee on Finance, asked the federal government to minimize borrowing but to fund projects in Nigeria. We have joining us to discuss this, Bolaho Olojede, an economist, and Biodu Shomi, a political analyst. Good evening to you, gentlemen. Thanks for being part of this particular discourse. We'll start with you, Bolaho. Good evening to you. Good evening. All right, uh, well, uh, over time we have talked about uh, you know this issue of uh, internally generated revenue at different fora. Right now, the Senate is actually taking it very seriously, and it is in tasking uh, revenue generating agencies, you know, to <laughs> to get about three trillion naira to the federal government's post, you know, annually. Some people f f seem to think this like um, um, uh, a toll order. In your opinion, do you really see? this particular objective as uh, something that is achievable, judging by the you know, body language and, of course, uh, the histories that we've had with um, uh, revenue-generating agencies in the country? Well, um, I'm glad that the, uh, the National Assembly is pitching in on this. And that is because um, it, it may be new in, the, in political discussion or, or in the policy generally, but it is not new to some segments of the government. For example, I'm aware that the budget office of the Federation has been trying to see how they can make something like this happen. So you have revenue generating agencies of government who has not been entirely transparent with the money they remit into the federal coffers. Oh. Um, some of them are also having um, that there are legal issues with some of them because if the law says you generate revenue, but you spend revenue, you spend part of it for your own operations. Uh, where do you draw the lines? Um, and, and those are those ones that are constrained by certain legality. We need to look at those laws and see um, if, if, if they are resenting it for any amendment. Uh, otherwise, if you say I can generate the money, but I, must, I can spend it as well. I might as well generate it and spend it and give you the change. The alternative is the money that comes in, goes in first, I remit it, then you give me money for the one that I will use for my operations. Uh, it, it's, it's neither here nor there. But is it possible? Yes, it is possible. We have a lot of these revenue generating agencies that are not you know, pulling their weights right now. All right, uh, let's start try and break it down because over time, you know, when we talk about revenue generating agencies, uh, what comes to mind first uh, is uh, agency soldiers and the Nigerian um, Customs Service, the Immigration, the Maritime, you know, NAFDAQ, and of course uh, we have um, the the tax collectors, the Federal Inland Revenue you know Service (FIRS). Let's talk about them for one uh, minute. You know, over time. We've been talking about how to, you know, get more people into the tax net. But what we see when when it comes to policy, the federal government uh, bringing that up, different policies that would actually, you know, impose more tax on the average resident. How do we begin to, you know, know where to draw the line and meet off some sort of a balance so that we can generate, you know, this required revenue in terms of taxation? for the federal government and, of course, not break the necks of Nigerians? Um, one of the... So go ahead. Can, can, very, yeah. can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay. One of the very uh, important parts of generating revenue from taxation is that the people who earn the most, the top earners, should Hello. be made to bear their fair burden of the taxation. As it is in Nigeria today, that category of earners, 
They are not carrying their weight. You take the U.S. as my favorite example. The top 1% earner in the U.S. pay almost 40% of the entire personal income taxation in that country. How much do our own top earners, how much do they pay? If you go and ask for the tax records of some of the people that are contesting for gubernatorial, for presidential election in this country today, spending billions, ask them to let us know how much they are paid in taxes for the past three years. You will be embarrassed. So the top earners are not paying is one of the problems. The second part is what you mentioned, which is uh, bringing more people into the tax net. And, and I think there are a lot of effort that are going on in that space. Some of them are, are being done via the uh, banks. Remember, there was a time we were asked to go and update um, your KYC information with the banks. And, you know, people felt it was also going to cause some trouble, uh, and, and they mellowed down on that. But a good way to bring more people into that tax net is via their bank account. Another way is all these other identification that we are collecting left and right. But you see, there is a bigger problem. Which is and that bigger problem is the capacity to even collect. Oh. As we speak today, while people are saying they are overtaxed, some of these taxes, a very significant amount, never reach the government coffers. Oh. So they, they are collected, they get collected, but they don't get to the government coffers. So they disappear in between the collector and the government treasury. So the efficiency of collection is a very important part that we must also bring to bear if we are going to rev up the taxation uh, uh, revenue in this, in this country. Otherwise, that guy that comes to ask you for, for a radio license of 50,000 naira, and uh, he is given 5,000 without receipt, and he goes away from it, with it. I know people today that they are they, this annual taxes that they will pay to government, and they will say there are no receipts, no revenue receipts. I, I, I don't want to point to the specific example I encountered very recently, about 10,500 naira with no receipt, no revenue receipts. So we have to be able to collect efficiently to rev up our tax collection. Otherwise, it's the same belt, the same narrow belt of people who are in structured employment that will continue to carry the tax body of this country because they don't have an option. It is deducted from their salary before you give them the net. So they pay automatically. All right. Thank you, Agboloha. We also have... Um uh, Biodo show me joining us in this um, this course. Good evening to you, Bola, uh, uh, Biodo. Good evening. All right, uh, let's get your frank uh, opinion concerning this issue of um, internally generated revenue. Uh, as it is right now, Senate is um, tasking uh, you know revenue generating um, agencies to uh, remit at least uh, three trillion naira annually. Given um, what we know by uh, of um, these um, agencies and um, judging by the fact that uh, over time they always want to come up with excuses, do you think that uh, these um, agencies can meet up with this target? And again, have they actually been very transparent when it comes to you know, the revenues they generate to the federal government coffers? Well, um, <clears throat> there are two angles to this um, issue. In the first instance, we are referring to agencies of government and parastatals. Oh. Um, one, are they desiring the agencies we want to collect revenue? Are they desirable or are they surplus to needs? Um, I will tell you exactly what I mean. If you go through the Orosa East report, which recommended that over 200 federal government agencies, you know, are simply one go for the boys. They are duplication of existing agencies. Oh. The money, half of the funds, which we are trying to look for now to generate, generate through new, through the agencies, you know, are actually, you know, being used currently, being expended on these duplicitous um, agencies, which in any case needs to be scrapped. The National Assembly got its focus wrong from day one. It's not about generating new money. The first thing is first, you know, we need to eliminate wastage within the system. Mm -hmm. Where you have dupli uh, duplication of agencies, 
where clearly it has been identified in the Osiris or Rosaris report, which is with, with the federal government. What they need to do is to first streamline the agents, the existing agencies. They'll be saving at least about 1.5 million naira, 1.5 trillion naira out of the three trillion they're looking for. And that's the first starting point before moving to you know charge those agencies to generate more revenue. Now, in relation to agencies which are in existence, and then you are they are expected to generate more revenue, we also need to get the balance right uh, when it comes to revenue generation. One, let me give you, I'll give you two copious examples. Yeah, One on. is customs, and the other is fiscal and urban planning development. Both are revenue generating agencies for governments uh, in Nigeria. If you tax, you know, imported goods so much, it will get to a point that more of the goods supposed to be delivered to Nigeria will be delivered to neighboring countries like Benin and Togo, Ghana. They will benefit from a low tariff on imported goods, and Nigerians will bring them in anyway under the ECOWAS Treaty. Don't forget there's freedom of movement of goods, you know, of people and goods, you know, for three months. These goods will be brought in brought into the country. And therefore, if you are not competitive, if you overprice yourself or you pressure the agencies you know, to charge so much, you will end up realizing that you will not get that revenue because, yes, you get a high uh, uh, revenue, but you won't get um, enough people to pay that revenue because they will have you know, diverted all their goods to, the, to, to, to neighboring ports. In the case of uh, fiscal and urban planning, if you increase the cost of approved planning, you know, to get approval for, uh, for building properties, if it becomes prohibitive, what you realize is that at the end of the day, people are not able to complete the houses. Now, what happens to the land use charge, which are supposed to be collected on... All right, we seem to... Okay, we have it back. Revenue that will be lost over that period of time. So it is not a straight court issue to say, oh, Senate can say we want to generate three trillion. You can. You cannot just decree it. It is not what you can decree. It's a function of the economy. And because it's a function of the economy, they need to take account of certain variables, you know, before they can do, uh, they say what they're saying. They have to eliminate wasted from the system while making efforts to generate more revenue. People tend to focus, focus more on income tax, personal income tax, but that's not the biggest uh, revenue generate, the generation for the country. What about the company tax? What is happening to it? We have heard of companies owing billions and then later government end up settling this thing behind the closed door. We know about MTN's case and some other cases. And then they are settled for a penal. You know, there is huge problem within the country, not only in terms of the wasted, in terms of generating revenue, even in terms of arbitration, All right. when there's a deep over um, income. All right, uh, thank you, Biodo. We'll come back to you. Uh, let's uh, talk to Bolo. I need to get more reactions for you. Uh, Biodo uh, has talked about uh, the issue of not just generating revenue. He talked about uh, how it is a function of the economy. He also talked about uh, the need uh, for the elimination of um, wastages and um, scrapping of um, redundant um, agencies. You know, at this meeting that was held at the Senate and, of course, uh, these revenue-generating uh, agencies, we had likes of um, uh, uh, the Luth, we had uh, the Nigerian Customs Service, we had um, NAFDAQ, we had uh, NIMASA, uh, they also had um, the Customs and um, the Immigration. Over time, looking at all of these agencies, uh, how do you rate their capacity? I'm talking to you now, uh, Bolaho. And uh, do you also agree with um, Biodo's um, postulation about um, uh, eliminating wastages and, of course, uh, uh, not wanting to duplicate uh, these existing agencies? Well, um, wastage in governance or in the bureaucracy um, is, is, is on the expenditure side of things, uh, mostly. Uh, but after we have generated the revenue, what do we spend it on? That is, that is where that goes to. But from the generation of the revenue units, uh, which is where all this agency you're mentioning uh, come, 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 come into uh, place, the agencies themselves, um, we've had calls about even how they spend money. Remember when I first started on this topic, I, I spoke about the fact that the law 
enables this agency to spend money too. Mm -hmm. So they yeah, collect revenue, they spend I mean, a portion of it to run their own operations. Oh. Now, if you look at some of the budgets presented by these agencies, you will see the more, more, more reason why um, we, a lot of Nigerians have said there are a lot of wastage, wastages that are going into those expenditures. So all sort of items are budgeted for sometimes at ridiculous prices. And we, we need to be able to deal with that. But that is on one side, like I said. The, the, the aerial areas of emphasis is collection efficiency, which is not there as we speak. Corruption that is involved in that collection in itself. Um, you know, uh, Mr. Shomi has spoken about how um, some things are settled out of the normal uh, uh, prescribed way that we're supposed to set some of these things. It, it is going on, it has been going on, it is still going on. We also have issues of exemptions in which certain organizations will leverage on what is going on, on, on certain interventions um, to seek all right, uh, we seem to have um, lost um, Bolonho. We'll try and reconnect uh, with uh, him uh, so, um, shortly, but then we'll try as much as possible to you know, do more discourse on this particular issue because it is something that uh, affects all of us as a people and of course as a nation. We'll take yet another break and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Now, one of the responsibilities of our leaders, especially that of the president and the governor, is to protect the lives of the people who voted him or her into power. However, these days, some of the decisions our leaders take seem selfish. For the longest time now, the country has been groaning under the weight of insecurity. The kidnappings, killings, looting, and more have caused many Nigerians to cry out like never before. Several political and security stakeholders have called for state police, not because they want to seize power from the central government, but because they believe it would help out. It was reported that three weeks into this year 2022, almost 500 Nigerians had lost their lives, majority of them from Niger State. Every day, we wake up to news and report about kidnappings and killings, and we think all is well. No, all is not well. At least, if state policing is rejected, something even more serious should be created to ensure the security of the country or receive sanity. You can't continue to hold Nigerians and their safety to ransom because you want to hold on to power. Take lessons from countries like Burkina Faso and Mali, our African neighbors. And to the issue of internally generated revenue for the government, it is one that has resounded over the years. We cannot continue to make budgetary allocations hinged on revenues from debt sources. If we keep this up, over time, the nation may just be mortgaged in the future of its citizens. This step taken by the National Assembly is one done in the right direction. Just how do we fund over 17.126 trillion Naira 2022 budget? I know the government had taken steps to get more revenue from taxation through the finance law of 2021, but we cannot continue to overburden the citizens without commensurate returns. They should rather plan on bringing more people into the tax net. However, if we need to task revenue generating agencies to look inward, I feel the lawmakers should be commended. And that's Lost Politics. I am Justin. I'll return again tomorrow. Bye for now.